Welcome everybody to a Minecraft Cubed Symphony of Bliss bonus video. This is a behind the scenes video and I'm going to talk about the Battle Zones competition which just wrapped up here with Space MC being the winner. Uh, this was a very fun one for me. Um, I'm very grateful to have two really good friends here who are willing to humor my silly ideas. Uh, I actually had the idea for this one during the blocked out competition, at least the very basic idea, but a lot of the extra components of this competition I sort of came up with on the fly as I was making it. Like I thought, uh, you know, this is good, but you know, wouldn't it be fun if there were more ways that the players could interact with each other? Like what if there were power-ups? Then I thought, oh, I could do like falling TNT, that would be really fun. Uh, and then also like um, the re regeneration thing, I realized there should be some sort of like bonus when you get a zone in your control, so I added that in kind of pretty late into the development of this competition. But anyways, I'm going to try and explain my best here how it works, because it was it was really fun to make. And uh, also, if I ever do it again, I want to have this video that I can look at. Uh, anyway, so the way this works, actually, I should start by saying that all of the zones, all five of the zones, uh, function very similarly with the commands. So I'm just going to focus on one of them, and I think that that should be enough to understand how all of them work. So I'm going to focus on the zombie zone and um, just keep in mind that it's similar commands for all of them. So for the way I set this up, I have basically command blocks all over the place. Um, but every zone has command blocks hidden beneath them. And then there's also a lot of command blocks at spawn because as I explained before, the spawn chunks are always loaded, which is very convenient for stuff like this. So, let's start with these command blocks here. These are mainly going to be the command blocks that are responsible for all of the effects that you see during the competition when you're in, e when you're in each zone. Uh, so this is like, oh well first, this is the little message in the chat when you enter a zone. You have entered the zombie zone, uh, so that's, that's what that is. But then we have, going down, this is the uh, command block that gives all of the zombies glowing effect, which is a really cool effect. I love that effect. Uh, so I have these parameters here. So type equals zombie. So just make sure that only the zombies are affected, nothing else. And then I have all of these distance parameters, which are what restricts the zone to this area. You type in the coordinates and then you type in how far away it should extend from where the corresponding coordinate is. So we have x, dx, y, dy, and the z, d, z. And all of these pretty much function the same. This is the same thing again, but for speed, because of course all the zombies run really fast. Uh, it's very scary when you are fighting them and they start calling in their reinforcements because they're so fast. Uh, and then we have same thing for strength because the zombies had a strength buff of, of uh, strength one, I think. And then, uh, this is the rent regeneration thing. So, this is the one for Polar Owl, and then this is the one for Space MC. The way this works is that it's testing to see the stained glass block above the beacon, whether it is lime colored or if it is pink colored, and that determines who is in control of the zone. And of course, uh, those are the colors that I selected for <laughs> Polar Owl and Space MC. Those are their colors. Uh, so. That's what that is. And then this is uh, oh, the unluck effect. Yeah, this is something I added in pretty last minute, but I thought that uh, it wasn't really clear enough whether you were in a zone or not. Like, where, where is that border? So I thought that was important because of the, like, the PvP rules. I wanted it to be a bit more clear. So I was trying to think of a way of doing that. And I realized that there is a pretty useless effect in Minecraft called unluck or bad luck. And... It's really not used for anything. I don't think it's even possible to get this in survival normally, but it makes you have worse luck when you were fishing. So <laughs> it's a useless effect, actually, like I said, but it actually was quite useful for this because I used it as a little visual indicator here that you are in a zone. So I think that's everything for this. Like I said, all of the zones have similar commands underneath them. But I'm going to move on to the next part, which is going to be the, the actual implementation of the scoring system. So let me go down here. Uh-oh, I can't see anything. Uh, okay, it seems to be loading just very slowly, so let's just be patient here. 
I'm in the Twilight Zone temporarily. <laughs> uh, there's an Enderman down here. Hello. Okay, so all of these commands are used for the competition. Well, actually, there, there's one exception. These few over here are used for Space MC's pumpkin pie <laughs> rewards that he got for the Thanksgiving dinner. But uh, the rest of these are important. Well, except for these ones. These are just like for testing. This resets all of the scores back to zero. But it's not actually used for the competition. But I digress. Um, I guess I can start by talking about these ones. So this is for the scoreboard that you see at the right of the screen. This is you know how you know how many points you have in each zone. And uh, the thing about Minecraft is that it kind of is limited in the number of ways that you can display objectives. Like, you pretty much only have three options. You have the, the little a bar above your name. And on my server, that is reserved for death count. And then you also have the, uh, the, the on the tab list on my server, that's hearts. And the only other option you have besides that is the sidebar. But uh, you still can only have one objective at a time. And I have five objectives for five zones. So I thought that the best solution would be to just sort of cycle through them um, over and over and over again. And I think that worked pretty well. That was pretty simple. I just made a redstone clock over here. That's It's a timer that goes up by one every second or so. And then I have these command blocks that activate depending on what the timer is at. It was actually very similar to how I did the, uh, the target block in the blocked out competition, if this rings a bell. Uh, so in this one, it will set the timer back to zero once it reaches 26. So that's what makes this keep going um, forever. So uh, when it's between one and five, it's the zombie zone. The skeleton zone is showing right now and next the spider zone will show. So that's how that works. Let's move over here to, this is the actual scoring system. And um, I should say that Minecraft does have a built-in criteria that will keep track of how many mobs you kill. So if you go to scoreboard objectives, add, uh, test, these are all the built-in criteria they give you, and uh, there's actually a lot of them. Like you can keep track of, uh, you know, how many times you've broken a certain block, how many times you've eaten a certain food, and you can also keep track of how many times you've killed a certain mob. Killed. Oh, it's on there somewhere. Okay, and um, but it is kind of limited. So like you can't like for example in this competition you can only score a point if you are in the correct zone. Like for the zombie zone, if you just kill a zombie you know, anywhere you don't get a point it has to be in the zone and there's not really a way that you can directly put that restriction in to the criteria so i had to sort of come up with a, a creative workaround i guess for how to make this all come together here so the way i did it is well once again these are all pretty much the same uh, command blocks this is for the zombie zone this is for the skeleton zone and so on so i'm just going to focus on these ones here and it all starts with this repeat command block, which will activate any time somebody kills a zombie, because I'm using the killed zombie. This is the, the base criteria that I was talking about. Every time you kill a zombie, this will go up by one. Um, and so this will detect when somebody's amount of zombies killed matches one, and it will send a redstone signal in two directions. So in this direction, we have a a reset basically so i have it so that as soon as you kill a zombie your number of zombies killed goes back to zero right away so as far as the game is concerned you can never have more than one zombie kill at a time it's always either zero or one and uh in the other direction this is the actual way that you earn a point so it's going to uh execute as player okay so it's going to only target the, the player who's killed zombie score matches one so this is sort of an edge case but like if we had two people in the zombie zone at the same time and one of them killed one then everybody would get a point so that's why i had to add this um extra parameter here and that will be equal to one because uh there's a repeater here which means that these command blocks will activate before this one so you will have a score of one for a second and then it will go back to zero so that's how that works, and I appear to be lagging here a bit because there's nothing here. Hello? <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. 
And so I also use the same parameters before as to where I'm only targeting the player if they're in the zombie zones. These are the same coordinates from before. So if you're not in the zombie zone, then nothing was going to happen. But if you are in the zombie zone and you are the one who killed the zombie, then you will earn one point in the zombie zone. And then we also have the, the message in the chat that says that uh, you've killed a zombie. And then this is also the currency that you get, because of course every time you kill something you get one point you can spend at the shop. And it's the same, uh, pretty much the same command as before, but uh, gives you currency. And it, it doesn't have those um, coordinate restrictions because this applies to anywhere. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the next component of this competition, which is the the boss bar at the top of the screen. So this is how the game keeps track of who's winning at any given point. And uh, this was actually a bit of a puzzle to figure out. But I did eventually uh, get it working. So once again, these are all sort of like clones of each other. But so this is for the zombie zone, skeleton zone, and so on. And then this is like Space MC's... Uh, this is Polar Owl's um, good column and this is space mc's good column so i'm just going to focus on this one i suppose so this is for the scenario when polar owl is in control of the zombie zone and so we have a repeat command block at the bottom that's keeping track of whether polar owl's score in the zombie zone is more than space mc's score in the zombie zone if it is then that means that she should be in control of the zone so if this is true, then this command block will activate and it will change the stained glass above the beacon to her color, which is lime. And then we need to uh, update her total amount of zones controlled. That's another objective I made. So at the top, you know, Space MC has four and Polarella has one. That's how many zones they have total. And that's what these two command blocks are for. So this is like for Polar Owl. I'm, I'm using a built-in feature called uh, execute store result, which will take the score that they have in, in one objective and copy and paste it to the boss bar dynamically. So that's how that works. It's very convenient and I've never used it before this competition. So it was fun to figure that out. Anyways, uh, and then we also have the message in the chat that says that uh, Polar Owl has taken control of the zombie zone. Hooray. Uh, so, and I wish that was all there was to it, but there is another thing we have to consider, which is that uh, if Polar Owl takes control of the zombie zone, then it probably means that Space MC lost control of the zombie zone, but only if um, it wasn't unclaimed. So essentially we have cases, uh, two different cases that we have to consider here, and to help me do that, I made another objective. So let me just see if I can find this scoreboard players list. Uh, I'll pick Polar Owl for sake of example here. So you can see that we have the like the spider zone and the zombie zone stuff that has her actual scores for how many mobs she's killed in those zones. But also there's these other objectives called Skeleton Zone C and you know Enderman Zone C, and those are basically just like. They're essentially binary variables. They're either going to be 0 or 1, and if it is 0, that means that she is not in control of the zone. And if it is 1, then it means that she is in control. That's why her spider zone is at... Spider zone C is at 1, and none of the other ones are, because that's the one zone that she's in control of here at the end of the competition. Uh, so, the way we're going to do this is we're going to um, check that Space MC's is in control of the if, of the zombie zone, and if he is in control of it, if it matches one, then we're going to remove one point from his um, zone's controlled score, and so that will go down and hers will go up. And then, uh, I should point out that all of these commands, the chain commands that you see here, are set to conditional, which means that they will only activate if the one before them gets a successful result. But these two at the top are set to unconditional, so they will always activate no matter what, because no matter what, these things need to happen. Uh, as Polar Owl needs to have her zone zombie control C updated to 1 to show that she's now in control of that zone. And we also have to make sure that Space MCs is set to 0. And so that's pretty much how the, uh, the boss bars work. Pretty interesting, I think. And there's there's still one other part of this competition, though, that I have to show, which is the power-ups, which were uh, a lot of fun, I thought. That's the one thing I wish that we could have got to see more of. I wish that we got more... Uh, I know there was at least one 
attempt at the uh, TNT surprise, but uh, no one was truly a victim of it. But it, it, it does look really cool. Uh, so the, the way this works is very similar to the shop in the blocked out competition where, um, you know, you can only press these buttons if you have enough money. And so we have this commander that's checking to make sure the person who places it has at least 10 uh, points. And then if they do, it will subtract 10 points from their currency. And then it will activate a couple of other commands that will, you know, do whatever is supposed to happen. Like it will say the message in the chat, uh, change the time tonight, you know, whatever it is. And so for these TNT ones, the way it works is that it will set a command, a, a redstone torch down here in one of these spots. Once again, this corresponds to the five different zones. So we have the uh, creeper zone, zombie zone, and so on. And so when the command go, redstone block, uh, redstone torch goes here, it will activate these three repeat command blocks, which are all needing redstone to work. And it will keep activating them over and over and over again until the uh, redstone torch goes away. Uh, in the meantime, it will just summon hundreds of TNT above the uh, the middle of the zone. And then I use this other command called slash spread players to spread all the TNT all over the place, just sort of randomly. It's a really cool command. As far as I know, it's actually one of the only commands in the game that allows you to add randomness to the game or pseudo-randomness. I actually used it in the Prankster's Pagoda season. If you recall, I had the uh, the sheep and I randomly moved it somewhere and it would fall into a pressure plate and randomly select one of the traps. So it's pretty useful and uh, it worked great for this. And then also I have over here, this is the, um, I'm basically using a, another counter. This is going to add one over and over again. And once it, once it reaches 300, it will delete the redstone torch so it will stop summoning more TNT and it will, it will reset the whole operation. And then these last two I sort of added near the end. This is what gives you slowness and um, jump boost 250, uh, 225. So it sounds counterintuitive, but when you have a really high jump boost effect, it actually makes it so you can't jump at all. I don't know why, uh, but so this is what basically locks you in place. Um, because I thought that you know, when I was testing that it was a little bit too easy to you know, just run away. So I, I added that in towards the end to make it so that it was more likely to kill you. So anyways, I guess to end off here, we can um, go ahead and watch a TNT surprise play out because I think it looks really cool. Um, okay, sorry for the cut. I, I thought I had the command pasted, but I didn't. Uh, anyway, here it is. Let's watch the TNT surprise over the creeper zone. Should be very exciting. Enjoy the, uh, the fireworks display. <laughs> Wonderful, isn't it? Magnificent. My testing is uh, usually almost always good. Uh, but it was a very low chance of survival. It's really lucky. It's just uh, exciting. For some reason, these guys don't die. I don't know why. Because you know, the skeletons die, so what's up with these guys? Uh, anyway, uh, I think that's everything, though, for this competition. Thanks again for you know playing, both of you. It was a lot of fun. And uh, that's all. I'll see you all in the next one. Happy New Year's Eve.